Here is Argonauts' TIE Interceptor kit. Now, uh, before finals came along, Argonauts was the best when it comes to, when it came to Star Wars kits in the 90s. And then uh, uh, fine molds came along. So both are Japanese companies and you know this is something I never knew about back in the day. Just never knew about these kits at all. Argonauts was a sub-label for Aoshima and they no longer use that. So yeah, this is a resin garage kit. And yeah, really simple parts here. Very low parts count. You got two wings. Got this, got the, the top here that goes on there, on top. And this goes on the bottom. So you got this uh, little key shaped thingy there. So I've already been uh, busy kind of busting off some of the, the parts there, the injection parts. Got more to do. The problem though is that uh, this kind of, it is it is resin and that this is the problem with garage kits is that it, it's kind of bending down and I'm going to try to soak it in some hot water. The only other parts are this here. Now there's, there's no clear part for the uh, for, for the view screen at all, but yeah, these metal parts will, uh, you know, for the guns, the, the view screen, and these uh, little parts that go right there. And another one that goes on the bottom of the um, plugs into that, but I don't know if I'm going to use that or not. I already washed this off with pumice powder. So it should be pretty much ready to go. Shall see. Let me uh, try to cut this as well as I can. Ah. All right. And this as well. Let me see if I can cut this cleanly. Oh yes, that just came right off. And now let's get this here and then file it away. So I'll just get busy and then when I'm done start soaking this in some hot water and see if I can straighten that out somehow. Play stand by Doyusha. This is a 3.5 millimeter hole. That's what this uh, this goes into here. So I'm going to go ahead and do the CA glue. Cool. All right. There. Okay. I'm going to drill. I have a 3.5 drill bit, and that's going to go right there. So there is a metal part that goes in there, but I'm not going to use it because I'm going to use this uh, uh, stand. So I'm going to have to let that dry. And I'll get this uh, set up in my pin vise. I don't know if it's going to fit on this one. Alright, I'm going to have to use this one here. Yeah.
Oh crap. <laughs> Shoot. Uh. Uh. Alright, I have to hold this, I guess, and then re glue it. There. That should do it. Okay. I'm going to open this guy up here. And since I put a hole in there, it's going to be easier to uh, put a stick in there so I can paint it. There we go. Go easy. Uh, go go deeper on this thing here. Do the top thing in here. Oh, my CA glue is uh, getting kind of stringy, which means it might be time to get a new one because that means that this has been contaminated. Um, the home center, Kinds Home Center, they have one of these. It's a Loctite makes a, just like this CA glue, so I don't have to get a Tamiya one next time. It'll just be easier just to go to the. It's probably cheaper too. <laughs> there. There we go. Alright, I am soaking this in some hot water, some boiling water, kind of helping it a little bit, pushing it down. This seems like it's pretty straightened out, I guess. Let's see how this goes. Oh. Hmm, okay, we're gonna cool it off now. That yeah, seemed to do it. I'm happy about that, guys. I really am. Alright, see how this looks now. Okay. There we go. All right. This fits onto here. Oops. 
Okay. Alright. Uh, you know, I, I think I need something um, a little more precise. I shall use... There we go. There we go. All right. Just kind of fits right there into the into the groove here. Hold on. There we go. All right. Dang it. There we go. There. Well, you know, it seemed to work better when I was just doing a dry fit. What the hell am I doing here? There we go. Okay. That's it. That is it. Ah, shoot. What, did this dry up already? Gosh darn it. I think it dried up already. There. Guns. All right. The other thing is uh, these are the same, pretty much. <sighs> okay, guys. This just fits right there, apparently. That's it. That's it. That's it. Fits right there. That's great. All right, I'll do the other wing. <sighs> Next, I'm using my diamond file here. Um, getting rid of this excess in the window frame here. The cockpit. So there's like some excess, like a ridge going along here. Just getting rid of it because I don't need it. So yeah, both of these are just great. And uh, this bottom part here, I don't need it anymore. So I'll just use that to detail up something else, kind of science fiction-y or something, right? Yeah. Forget about the file, this is so much easier, just using an X-Acto knife. The metal is soft enough that it just comes right off pretty much. Just gotta be careful. But yeah, excess is coming off just fine. I would not have known that. But I just gave it a shot and there you go. Nice, and then I'll probably go over that with the diamond file once I'm done going around all the, the sections here. Okay, I'm gonna go over the metal parts with Mr. Metal Primer. Just brushes on real easy.
Okay. And last is this guy here. I learned I have to be careful because this is very bendable. I didn't notice that at first. Ah. But now I know. And knowing is half the battle. Okay, Mr. Resin Primer by Mr. Hubby. This is a now defunct product, so I'm going to try this resin with Mr. Resin Primer here. Uh -huh. Okay, this is a German Grill, Tanya XF63. Nice. Okay, next I'm going to do the dark panels, and to do so, I am going to uh, use the old, uh, this is the stuff I had left over from my fine uh, um, vault project. Huh? Yeah. So yeah, it's a it's a mixture of black and gunmetal Tanya acrylic, and I'm just gonna use it again. I have plenty left over, so I'm happy about that.
Nice. Very nice. So the instructions for the fine molds just tells you to paint it just a flat black, but I think we're adding a bit of good gunmetal to it. Makes it look a lot more handsome, I think. So, oh, very nice, guys. Very nice. kind of messed up a little bit but I guess it's okay so this is masking some masking sheet I'm going to I've already cut this out it's like 17 17 millimeters okay Protect it mostly. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll put some, uh, probably put down some uh, masking solution to kind of help that out a little bit. Now I'm using a uh, Tamiya masking tape. This is a sharp new knife, and I am just pushing very lightly. Let's see if this is ready to come off. No, nope, it's not. Okay, it's time to do the main body color, and this is Air Superiority Blues, Mr. Color, or, yeah, Mr. Color 74. I love this color, I think.
Okay, hopefully this masking is uh, done well. I shall find out. Okay, the wind shield is uh, neutral gray. That's <laughs> a wind shield. Whatever the hell it is, right? The, the can up here. Maybe like the front. The front screen for me. Right? I'm gonna go on the inside too if I can. Okay, masking has so far been successful. There's a couple of little parts right here. Ah, that's the, the frustration about resin, I guess, is that it's, you have to really scrub it hard. Here's another part right here. Um, this, this worked out all right. The little thing in the back looks great too, more or less. Do a little, tiny little bit put touch up. There we go. Just continue to uh, remove all of these. And keep going forward. Now this model does not come with any decals like the, uh, the fine molds kit, right? Or the Bandai. So that, that's a step I can skip. Just gonna build this as is, really. Nothing special. I uh, see there's a little spot here and a little spot there. I can maybe cover it up with just the, the enamel wash, perhaps. So this kit has no interior, cockpit interior to speak of. It's just kind of just flat here. I'm painting this with just a. Uh, well, it's mostly uh, maybe 50-50 XF69 NATO black and XF1 flat black. And it's got some retarder in there as well. I'll just get busy. Oops, sorry. Painting this. Now, <clears throat> there's some edge around the the wind uh, the view screen, the cockpit screen, whatever you want to call it, the front view screen, and um, that's going to be the aircraft gray, same color as what I airbrushed this with. Okay, got a little bit more painting to do, going to use some paint retarder. There we go. 
All right, so what's going on here? Well, as I mentioned, there's that, uh, that ring that goes around the outside there. So I had painted this. Oh, by the way, it's something I, just, I never knew until just, uh, just recently I watched a video on this. So this is how it goes, right? Goes, uh, you know, vertical and horizontal, right? And then 45 degrees. And A New Hope, the shots from inside the cockpit of the TIE Fighters, the view screen looks like this. Odd, huh? But this is like a, a bit of inconsistency that they kept throughout the whole time, I guess, in making these movies and such. All right. I used Neutral Gray, Mr. Color 13. Unfortunately, because I, I want to be able to hand paint, and it's a lot easier to paint, hand paint with acrylics. This is considerably lighter Neutral Gray. Okay. Well, uh, Tamiya Neutral Gray XF53 is a closer color. That is pretty darn close. So that's what I'm using. That is what I'm using. Oh, let's mix this up. Okay, just start painting around the perimeter here. So there's this that goes along. There we go. And the other thing that needs to be painted is uh, this stuff here. These things on the sides of the cockpit. So that's what I'm going to continue to paint here. A little bit of a detail that I want to do. This is as per the fine molds instructions, a little bit of a gray there. And I still got the paint going. So I did the, the back engines here, or this is like uh, the front. And I'm going to paint this. I just masked it off. Maybe, uh, Kind of make it dry. I don't want to go too strongly on this at first because it might bleed under. Alright, I'll come back to that. Let me, uh, I thought I. Yeah. I need to uh, pick that up. There we go. Okay. Well, this is pretty darn cool. Now, the top, I'll have to do that as a uh, uh, gloss black to simulate the, the 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 view screens on top, but I'll have to do that after the the paint dries. After I want to actually, I'm going to do the panel lines next. I'll do that last after I do the flat coat. But it's looking pretty cool. Okay, I'm using Mr. Weathering Color Filter Liquid Shade Blue and thinned it out with some Weathering Color Solvent. That's what it's made for to go with this. All right. Now, 
I just wanted to do this instead of like a black or a gray or whatever and uh, see what it looks like okay Okay, it's just a paper towel with the solvent here. Just wiping off excess here. I'm moving on to the black Mr. Weathering color. going over here. Okay, and I think I'm pretty much done here. I, I wiped off most of the excess. So, it's looking pretty nice. Um, next, I, I might uh, do a little bit of dry brushing. Then I'm going to uh, do a uh, clear coat. going to do this uh, for just the cockpit here. I'm going to use some neutral gray here. Um, these, are, these are the details that are going to be kind of a, hidden behind the, the canopy. <laughs> you know what? I don't see anything. <laughs> Did, did too good of a job removing the, the stuff, I guess. Let me try this again. Alright. Okay, well, it's, 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 uh, it's kind of nice, actually. Great. Alright, um... It's getting late. I'm not going to turn on my air, my uh, air compressor or whatever. I'm not going to uh, turn on my stuff, my my extractor booth or anything like that. So I'm going to call it a night, and uh, hopefully I can uh, do the, the clear coat tomorrow. It's getting late. Time for go to bed. Okay, flat, clear, Tamiya XF86. Oh, um, I went ahead and painted the thing with just a flat. I thought about doing gloss, but since the, the front windshield or whatever is not going to be like a clear plastic, just just keep it flat. What the hell? Why not? It's free country. Looks like my super glue is getting a bit old. Getting a little bit stringy. Just a little bit. Just a 
have this glue into position. Next, plug this guy in here. Very nice. Very nice. Now, this ball socket should snap into position. Um. <laughs> should. Should. Okay. I, uh, I had to use my, my pliers to force it down into the, the ball socket. That's what I did. You'd, I didn't have to un unscrew this after all. I've used one of these things before, but I, I kind of forgot about that. So left, left. There's the L right there, okay? Let's see, look. It's, it's stringy. It's getting old. It's getting old. Oh, shit. Shh, kebab. Shish kebab. I, I said shish kebab, okay? So shut up. There. Oh god. Okay, there we go. Okay, here we go. So, this is complete. And I think I'll maybe, maybe I'll put a little Star Wars deck out there. So, anyhow, this is a cool build. And I'll show you the fine molds one next to it. Okay, so keep in mind that uh, both of these are 70 second scale, and uh, this one's a bit smaller. <laughs> yeah, but um, there we go. Neat stuff, guys. All right, so um, easy, easy uh, construction on this. It's pretty de decent detail. I mean, it's not. I don't know. What do you think? I think it's pretty good. So, yeah, cool stuff, guys. All right, well, that's it. Here comes the slideshow. So, as always, live long and prosper. May the force be with you. And so long, and thanks for all the fish. Bye.